Hey, hey, everybody, what's going on? Troy the Foodie here. Welcome to an edition of Troy the Foodie. I used to call it Taste of Troy, but you can find me at Troy the Foodie on Instagram. And of course, here on our Troy the Foodie YouTube channel. All right, so as you can see, I got a glorious turkey here. I have a glorious turkey here. Uh, we were traveling, and since it's the holiday season, I like turkey year round, but since it's the holiday season, I uh, wanted to show you guys a special how I do one of the recipes I do for my turkey so this is going to be one of my Zoe recipes my daughter's name is Zoe my daughter has food allergies like many people have food allergies and like a lot of your children have food allergies and you're like Troy we don't know what to cook well my daughter's eight years old for so for eight years I've been cooking foods that were uh, allergy sensitive or uh, uh, or perfect foods for people who have food allergies, meaning that I don't have any nuts, I don't have any dairy in it, and I don't have any eggs in it. So no nuts, no dairy, no eggs. And this beautiful turkey, I have sea salted her down. <laughs> I say her because she has a breast and I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I've sea salted her down. And, uh, and some people say how much sea salt, you know, just, Salted, salted like you would salt a good piece of meat, but this is a turkey. So you know it's going to be cooking for a while, and you want to make sure it's seasoned well. Now, I am going to do one of my special marinades, and this is a marinade I call the Zoe marinade. It's basic. This marinade, in and of itself, has sea salt, molasses. We have some parsley in there, ground parsley, and I mix it up. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, so I love Old Bay. A little Old Bay in there, and a little bit of pepper, and some light tasting olive oil, which is great for cooking in any temperature. And you know, olive oil can be overpowering in a lot of recipes. The flavor is so amazing. And one thing we're going to do about this turkey, as you saw in the title, is we're going to cook this turkey in a crock pot. Now, some people like crock pot, that'll never fit in a crock pot. Well, I have a great size pot crock pot bam <laughs> and this is a 13 pound turkey it was frozen i took the time to thaw it and for those of you that don't know how to look at this bam 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 and now i haven't filled it yet but you know we'll squeeze her in there bam and here's the test bam so as soon as you hear that boom bam <laughs> the top is on all right so but one of the things that you can also do, um, and I've done it before, if I had a turkey and I had a chicken that was kind of large, or I'm not sure, I might have, it might have been a turkey, and I covered it with foil and then put the top on, because you know the meat is going to cook down. Mm -hmm. So as it cooks, and you know, crock pot, as you know, it's like, well, crock pot, crock pots can get as hot as, or hotter than an oven, and it and everything is hot. And when you're cooking something like this, you're actually getting a good roast for the entire turkey. Okay, so crock pots are a great way to cook a turkey and not worry about it. And a slow cooked turkey. So, like I said, I have the Zoe marinade, molasses, sea salt, parsley, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of obey, light tasting olive oil. And this is gonna be my rub. Very important. When you're making a turkey for everybody that you want to make sure it's seasoned well it's nothing worse than a turkey that's not seasoned well well a dry turkey <laughs> so dry and not seasoned is the worst thing in the world for your turkey and me and this turkey are getting very personal and i'm about to massage this turkey like we're closer and we're very personal friends <laughs> This, I'm going to spa the turkey. I'll call it spa. When I say spa the turkey, you got to massage the sucker all over. And I'm going to show you because what I'm going to do is take, uh, because I'm cooking in the crock pot, as many of you may or may not know, CCO. You heard Rachel Ray back in the day always say CCO. Well, that's celery, carrots, and onions. And the great thing about, I got some, some dried, um, rosemary here great great smell great flavor um, a little dehydrated keep it in the fridge 
Um, I have a red onion. I have some red russet potatoes and some celery. Now, I'm doing all this for flavor and tenderization. The great thing about um, onions is they're amazing tenderizers. So CCO, when you're doing a crock pot or meat in a crock pot, it's great because celery, onions, and carrots are amazing tenderizer. And of course, you can make a great stew out of them. I mean, as many of you know, if you've seen me cook in my crock pot on my Instagram page, at Troy the Foodie, I don't usually put water in a crock pot. If you have onions, and I usually use sweet onions, Mayan onions, or even white or yellow onions sometimes. If you have onions, celery, and carrots in your crock pot around your meat, they make their own juice. And it's according to the skin of the meat, if you're doing a, a chicken, turkey, or um, even if you have, you know, if you have pork or beef, of course, you want something with a good marbleization, a good amount of fat. So that fat cooks and it makes its own juice with the onions and the celery and the carrots. Mm! Ooh, Lord! Okay, it's early in the morning, but <laughs> let's get started. So, and thank God I have a wonderful size. As you can see, I have a 13-pound turkey in here. Uh, I have a wonderful, almost commercial-sized kitchen. Um, kitchen sink so this was a frozen turkey and after Thanksgiving and around Thanksgiving it's great to get the frozen turkey deals so um, and to thaw a turkey if you have time you, you know you kind of want to do it in the night hours because you can you want to make sure you clean your sink properly bleach hot water I have extremely hot water and clean it clean it properly because you don't want any um, contamination, anything like that. And after you do a turkey or anything in your sink, go back and do it again. Bleach, clean it, um, hot, extremely hot water, and make sure your sink is cleaned thoroughly. Because you don't want to cross contamination, anything get on your dishes later or anything like that. So I cleaned the sink thoroughly, and I actually thawed the turkey in here. I put it in wrapped cold water. You never want to thaw a turkey in hot water. You always want to use cold water, and the cold brings out the cold. So you put it in wrapped, and then you get it get it thawed enough so you can take the wrapping off, and then you dump the water, let the water out, fill it with cold water again. And this sink is great because obviously the turkey was submerged. So I think all together for it to thaw thoroughly, it took about five to six total hours. So um, and um, once it was ready, she was ready to go. So it's early in the morning here, but I wanted to make sure we were underway. Okay, let's get to it. it shouldn't take too long. I'm uh, talking more than the time it's gonna take to do this. So like I said, I have my Zoe marinade, and this is the, <laughs> this is the fun part. And um, I like to, now, I'm using the Zoe marinade now, and put it all over the turkey. Now, oh, look at that celery looking wonderful. It smells amazing. That sweet smell. I like a salt. I have a salty sweet palate, so um, a marinade with a good with. I, I, I use molasses a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Um, if it's a marinade for, if it's a marinade for, yeah, you gotta get inside. You gotta get all over. Now, there's so many different rest of rest recipes out there. I, uh, a comedy friend of mine, Lunell, showed me something. She has a, a recipe that her sister showed her even. And her sister did a turkey and I guess it's like a family recipe or something her sister put her down with. Did a turkey and then put it in a, like a big Albertsons or supermarket bag. And be careful. Be careful, guys. Because, um, and of course my hands are thoroughly washed. This is a turkey for me and my family. Um, but be careful because there are bones inside your turkey. So when you're when you're moisturizing the inside of the turkey, be careful because you don't want to cut yourself because some of those bones are sharp. And you have to get the whole turkey. I know somebody's like, Troy, you haven't turned it. What about the bottom of the turkey? Oh, we're going to get the bottom, baby. We're going to get all of this turkey. All of that up. No, <laughs> what you talking about? Oh, don't start laughing on me now. Okay. <laughs> but um, she put a, I guess, season up the turkey, put it in a like a paper shopping bag, stapled it, and then roasted it. 
And I guess that made a like a like a roasting bag. But something about the brown paper bag, the Albertson's bag that she used, and roasted the turkey in the bag. And it came out so tender, so I was like, oh, okay, I gotta try that one day. But this one is for the busy moms, busy parents that want to have another way. Please stop, stop telling me you don't have time to cook. My first cookbook is actually called <laughs> Stop Saying You Don't Have Time to Cook. So it'll be out soon. <laughs> stay tuned and stay to this channel and share this everywhere. And you guys, make sure you press the like button, um, but also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Troy the Foodie. As soon as we get a hundred of new channels, so you, this is one of our first recipes we're going on. And if you're on Instagram, you'll see it on IGTV. Make sure you got good. Okay. And um, okay, so I've used all of this marinade. Some people are like, how do you know if the turkey is seasoned good? You 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 know, after a while of cooking, you know. But if this if you're new to this, a great way to know if your turkey is seasoned well is to make sure it doesn't look white or yellow anymore. It doesn't have that pale color you know now if you can see the turkey it kind of has a brownish hue to it it kind of looks like it's glazed that's exactly what I want okay so I was about to say there were different ways to make turkeys and I'm not doing the whole time capsule thing on this one no I'm gonna show you guys hopefully I can get it and hopefully I have every yeah it's 11 minutes there's no reason I shouldn't have this all seasoned and ready to put in a crock pot within 15 minutes. That's it. Even with me talking and with you guys and going slow. Okay. Sorry guys. So <laughs> and if you're like me and you have to keep your hands, I don't want to soak my hands really, so I have my own powder to dry my hands and I don't want to soak my hands right now. Because I mean soap my hands right now because I don't want the soap flavor in the food right now. So, so you see that gorgeous girl right there. <laughs> I don't know if turkeys are male and female anyway. Oh, another thing I was gonna say, great, another great recipe, I may show it another time, because since this is gonna be something on my Zoe menu, there's no nuts, no dairy, no eggs. So, perfect for people, like I said, with food allergies. <laughs> and it's fun, this is one of those turkeys with the pop-up timer. I don't think we're going to need that in the in the crock pot. I'll be able to tell. Because I'm going to let it cook for maybe six to eight hours easily. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so it'll be done for dinner time. You know, six to eight hours. You cook it early in the morning. Then people get home from school. My daughter gets home from school. And, What's that beautiful smell? <laughs> All right. So, next up, here's what we do. Remember that onion? So I cut a red onion. Oh, the marinade. Sorry. I get carried away. I, another great thing to use, and this is for people that don't have egg allergies, is like I did the marinade, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise at its core, a good natural mayonnaise, is just egg and oil, really, really. So I saw a recipe years ago and I started doing it, and I would have put all those herbs mixed with some mayonnaise. And the great thing about mayonnaise is it has the egg in it, so it gives a golden brown feel when it, as it cooks and it roasts, and the oil moisturizes it, and it almost comes out like a, as juicy as a fried turkey. Amazing. So this one, we're not worried about the juiciness and the tenderness because we're going to cook it in a crock pot, so everything is going to be in there. So this onion, I'm not even going to slice it up because I don't want just sliced onion, so I'll put the whole thing in there. You see that? Half a, half a red onion, chop, slice it up a little bit, put it in there. I'll show you what we'll do with the other half later. That rosemary I was talking about, just gonna slide them in there. What? What? I'm just gonna slide it on in. Slide it in different parts. Slide it on in. Great thing about turkey, you can you can slide it. You can you can poke it. You can do whatever. Slide that rosemary in there, because while it's in the crock pot and it's roasting. All those flavors, and this is, you know, this rosemary is 
dehydrated. You can use um, you can use actual um, rosemary that's not um, it's you know fresh rosemary as well. The celery, I'm not chopping it up anymore. Slide it on in there. Slide it on in. <laughs> You're talking about flavors, people. Slide it on in. Now, of course, this is going to be a little bit bigger because we have everything inside, but we're going to squeeze her down in that crock pot. And like I said, if it's too big, we can always, and then I slice red potatoes, put them in. And we are done. And don't worry, you know, the red, the red onion is going to, it's going to, you know, you're going to have some of the color from the red onion. Don't worry about that right now. When you see it later, like, is it done? It will be done. So. As so, you see that? So we have stuffed a turkey. And all right, here's the, here's the, here's the thing. We're gonna see if we can get her in the crock pot. extra essence on this cutting board has to go in. That has to go in there. Now, let's see. Look at that. Look at that. Please don't tell me you don't have time to cook. Okay? Okay? Okay. So she's in the crock pot. Let's see. Let's do the ultimate test. There you go. Okay. So it's a little. It's a turkey. So if you want to, and it's up to you if you want to take the legs off and cook the legs separate. You know, but this is so. If if she was a, sorry, you didn't see this. Oh, get off my arm! Um, uh, <laughs> push her wings down. Um, if uh. If this was a 10 pounder or a, um, okay, remember that, and this is just a little something extra. Remember that um, red onion, I cut it in half. So the rest of it I just chopped up. Take that red onion, put it around. Put it around. Tenderize the outside, moisturize, just a little bit more flavor. Now I'm using red onion, like I said, you can use any onion, it's up to you. Put the wings down. This down, this down a little bit, tighten her up in there, and bam, we have it. Now, still, it raises a little bit, so I still may put a little foil over top of it, but I'm not too worried about it. The crock pot gets so hot um, that it will also, like I said, it will cook down a bit. But also some people just like you cook with other things you may have a brick or something you want to set on top of it but you know I'm not too concerned about that not too concerned okay there we go perfect and there you have it turkey in the crock pot okay so either I'm gonna do a part two of this or I'll do the magic of uh, <laughs> editing and put the end results with this video later. So uh, stay tuned for how this girl comes up. All right. Troy the Foodie at Troy the Foodie on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook, Troy Rawlings, Troy the Foodie, and uh, become a part of the Troy the Foodie Nation. Make sure you subscribe. And talk to you guys soon, guys and girls.